Join us as we venture into Lisbon, the lively capital of Portugal. We're heading off on a gastronomic adventure around the colourful city, but we won't be going alone. Today we're joined by Leon and Meek, who along with their cat Mio, live, travel and explore in Peggy, their home on wheels. Together we're going to experience some of the best food Lisbon has to offer. <laughs> Don't forget the pip. We enjoyed some of it more than others. So Meg has done a lot of research and she's produced her very own self-guided food tour of Lisbon. So unfortunately the weather doesn't look like it's going to get much better than this, but we're going to make the most of it. Yes, it is February the 1st, so what do we expect? We're going to persevere, have a good time, keep a positive mental attitude and push through. <laughs> and eat food, so... Yeah, that's going to make up for it. Nice, warm, tasty food. We put our best foot forward and headed towards our first treat of the day. <laughs> so you cannot come to Portugal without trying one of the custard egg tarts. So we've made our way to Belém, where we're going to try the real OG. It's called the Pastiche de Belém. It was created in the 18th century by monks that used egg whites to starch their habits, like their, their outfits. And they needed a way to use the yolks. So they created this delicious pasty. So we're now going to make our way to the bakery that was founded in 1837. Are you listening? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and this bakery sells over 20,000 of these tarts a day, which is pretty rough. <laughs> yeah. Astronomical. And it's been in the same family since 1837 too. That's pretty awesome. Let's get out the rain, but there's a chance we might have to queue because it's well known and one of the, the places to the go places, in yeah. Lisbon. Not touristy at all. <laughs> but we can't not do it, so no. <laughs> so we've kind of found ourselves in the queue to sit down. You have to sit there out for it. Yeah. We were supposed to take out, but now we're in the queue. We're rocking with it. We queued for around 10 minutes before being seated in the bustling cafe. So it's time to taste the real OG. It's made out of mille fuel pastry, which means a thousand layers. And it's time to put a little bit of ice and sugar and cinnamon on top and see what our guinea pigs think of it. <laughs> We're in for a real treat because they're warm as well. You ready? Yeah. Go for it. Okay. That is good. Like no, I do, I do, I do. I was playing around. Yeah, I like them. Okay. So guys, what do you think? I want one word to describe the pastiche de Belém. As a food noob, I would say crispy. <laughs> I'd say creamy. And I'd say creme brulee. <laughs> <laughs> Lisbon has got quite the cafe culture and right now we're having a coffee in the library, so shh. We took the opportunity for a quick caffeine boost and shelter from the persistent rain. Feeling refreshed, we headed back out to face the elements and continue exploring. So behind us is the monument to the discoveries and it's got all the famous explorers on there. Oh, but it's missing two. One day, mate. Maybe one day. It's <laughs> bloody windy, so we'll have to do a little pan up, a little bit like this. Thanks to the intense wind for the wobbliest pan up caught on camera. To escape the elements, we decided to jump on some of Lisbon's famous public transport to get us to our next destination. Come here, Cal and Meg. I'll give you some tips. If you say we're going for lunch, go for lunch. It's five now, 5 p.m. It's almost tea time, as you would say. Leon was right. We were behind schedule. To remedy this, we went for something more substantial to eat. So another must eat in Portugal is Piri Piri. And we've come for Piri Piri chicken at Bon Jardim, which is one of the highest ranked places to indulge in a bit of Piri Piri chicken. 
So the Peri Peri spice originated in Mozambique but was spread to all the Portuguese colonies when the explorers went in the 1950s. So it's now Cal's first bite. It looks good. Bon appetit. It smells good. Mm. Is it spicy? Yeah. Nice. At the moment. <laughs> It's very tasty, but my taste buds are like... The warmth of the Piri Piri was very welcome after a wet and windy day. I, can, I think I can tell that you liked it. Yeah. It is spicy. I've been there. That was a little bit spicy, but very, very good. Really good. We'll leave it there, and then we're gonna go outside, stand in front of the LED screen and do our actual reviews. <laughs> so we have just indulged in our Piri Piri chicken meal, and it was one of the quickest meals we've ever had. It was out on the table within 10 minutes of ordering it and it was one of the tastiest bits of chicken I've had in a long, long time, which is quite high praise, because I do like my chicken. Anyway, without further ado, what is your three words? Spicy. Succulent. Crispy. Crispy skin. <laughs> <laughs> Gorgeous. It was really, really good. Right, so we had dinner. That was lovely. Cheers. But I need coffee, man. Ah, where are we going? Funny you should mention that, I know just the place. Don't I, Meg? Meg? Yeah, let's go uh, check some coffee spots out in the main square, in Orocio Square. Meg knows best. <laughs> Always. <laughs> I need Yellow. coffee, let's go. <laughs> just go already, just go. Which way anyway? I don't know, just go with them. <laughs> I think it actually is this way. Whoa, wait a second. Hold on the coffee. We've just walked past somewhere where we need to go. It's for a medieval medicinal cherry liqueur. So, let's go and have a little shot shot. So this is the second oldest place to get ginger in town. And we've got to be a little bit cautious because the cherries are still in the drink. So you can't just shot it because there's a chance you might choke because I think they've still got the stones in as well. Slangeva. Slangeva. Salut. It's quite nice. Sweet. Uh, it's good. Yep. I love your tour. Mm. <laughs> So we have drank our ginchinas and we are left with our cherries. So three words for your little drink there, everybody. Sticky. Medicinal. Thick. <laughs> <laughs> and right. just the cherry now, just, so cheers. Yeah. Cheers. cheers. All right. Salut. Okay. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Don't forget the pip. Mm -hmm. We finally made it to Rossio Square for a much needed coffee. Making our way around the city mostly on foot was tiring work. The next morning brought with it slightly more favourable weather which gave us a little more pep in our step. We headed off on foot to our next destination. So no city food tour would be complete without a trip to the local market. So we're about to head into Mercado Ribeira. I hope I've pronounced that correctly. More food. <laughs> Always food. The market was first referenced in the 1100s, but then it was destroyed in 1755 by a massive earthquake. Slowly since then it has been rebuilt, and in 2014, a little bit extra has been added. But first, let's check out the food scene here. First we headed into the original produce market, where we found a huge range of fresh fruit, vegetables, flowers and fish. Only a few years ago, the market was declining in popularity and sales. 
But the market today is something quite different. It's been dragged into the 21st century and is now a massive food hall. Time Out Market has 26 restaurants, eight bars, and over 12 independent shops selling all the best that Portugal has to offer. It's also an upmarket music venue and cookery school. But today we're here specifically for one thing, the modern version of the pastiche de Belém, also known as the pastiche de Nata. So it's time to taste test the younger brothers of the ones we had earlier, the pastiche de Belém. So let's see what the differences are and which ones we prefer. As you can see, the market is heaving and it's clear to see why. There is a huge number of vendors selling beautiful cuisine from all over the world. So what did you think about the second pastiche? I like the first one better. <laughs> well, what did I think of it? Well, it wasn't as good as the first one, to yeah. be honest. I like the first one better. Original all the way. Leon? Same this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like I like the first one better. The second one was a bit like eating a soft boiled egg. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's so. not what you want for a pastry. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> so, so the first one. First one. Yeah. First one. First one. First one. General consensus, Maggie, what do you reckon? Well, I know you like the second one, yep. so I'll speak for you. But I think I quite liked how sweet the second one was, and I preferred the texture of the custard. Um, but everybody else is saying the original's the best, so... I think it is. I'm outvoted, and what do I know? <laughs> Being a chef and all. <laughs> Next up, we're hitting Otrevo for a Bifana pork sandwich. So Bifana's are Portugal's favourite sandwich and cheap eat and the place behind us was made even more famous when it was visited by the late great Anthony Bourdain. So what do we think chaps? Three words? We got one word, rubber. <laughs> cheap. Satisfactory. I quite like it. I don't think it lived up much to the hype to be fair, it's a little bit not tender is the answer, but cheap enough, so... Unfortunately, the Bafana didn't quite hit the spot, but it did give us the energy required to walk up the steep and narrow streets to the Alfama neighbourhood. So next up is Portuguese green wine, also translated to young wine, vino verde. It originated in 1908 in Minjo province of Portugal. It's right up in the far north. For it to be classified as green wine, it's got to have grown in that region or that DOC. It can come in rosé, red and white, and it's got a little fizz, and it's quite low alcohol. So, cheers. Mm. So guys, we've drank most of the jug of green wine. I need your reviews, your one word answers. What do you think? Refreshing. Sparkly. Subtle. <laughs> so we just received this complimentary glass of ginger, and it's very different to the one we tried before. This is a lot smoother and quite a bit sweeter as well, and it's a lot nicer to drink in my personal opinion. But we're not sure what the difference is. It's a different brand, the way they make it. I'm not sure, but not all of them taste the same, is what I'm getting at.
So we now find ourselves in Pink Street, sampling a little bit of the Lisbon nightlife. The food tour is over, we've had a fantastic day. The city is full of colour, fantastic tastes, and just really good vibes. We want to say thank you very much to Leon and Meek. Their link is down below, and they've been fantastic tour guides. We don't really know what we would have done without them. Thanks for a lovely taste of Lisbon. Cheers, guys. So thank you very much for watching. Leave a comment down below if you've liked anything that you've seen. Give us a like, subscribe if you fancy, and we'll see you in the next one. <laughs>